All right, so I was trying to get all of my preseason predictions for all the team's records this season out in the podcast feed before the season starts. But that seems like it's uh, impossible at this point because today's Monday and the season starts tomorrow, uh, Tuesday. So, and all I have is the West done. I did an episode per division, so I did three episodes for the West, and I'm still going to release one for the East where I'm just going to do all 15 teams in one episode, but I'm not going to be able to get that out by uh, tomorrow. So I figured I'd record a video instead um, to just put out right before the scene starts uh, to show what I have for my predictions, even though I haven't I haven't gone through the East the same way or in the same depth that I have with the West. I haven't like examined every roster over here in the East yet, so I'm sure there's some people that are going to show up on some teams that I wasn't quite aware of yet. That might make me want to change things a little bit. I doubt very much, though. But yeah, this is what I have for now. And also, if you're looking at these, these are just my um, reasonable predictions, I call it if you listen to the podcast episodes. So I also have like a ceiling and floor range that I do for every team as well. Talk about worst case scenario and best case scenario that I can predict, I guess. And so these numbers over here are really just more of my over under essentially, like where I feel like their over under should be about. And so that's what I have up here on this side of the screen. I have the FanDuel Sportsbook open on the regular season wins tab. We're going to look at these teams over unders, see how close my predictions are to the over under line, see if there's any surprises. So the only one I have looked at so far was Atlanta. I opened it a little bit ago just to see how this page worked. But yeah, their over under line is 45 and a half wins, which my reasonable prediction I have them at is 47. So I would not be super comfortable betting on this particular team, but obviously if I had to, I would go over, over 45 and a half, you know, adding DeJounte Murray. I think Clint Capella should have a better season than he did last year, honestly. And yeah, this Hawks team is just kind of, should be getting better for the most part, most of the players on their roster. So yeah, 45 and a half seems reasonable to me. Boston Celtics. Wow. Okay. So 53 and a half wins. I thought that it would be a lot farther down by now after the whole Ime Yudoka scandal. I thought I might've had them a little bit high. Um, so surprisingly, I would have to, if, if I was forced to make a bet, I would have to go under on the Celtics, which another bet I wouldn't feel great about doing um, because before all the dramatic stuff happened, the bad things happened, like on the second half of the, the offseason for the Celtics, I thought they were having the best or near the best offseason in the NBA before that. And they were honestly my pick earlier in the offseason for my championship favorite this upcoming season. But now with them, you know, having to have their coach be suspended for an entire season and them appointing an interim coach who's the youngest coach in the league now, probably wasn't going to be a head coach on any other team this year or any other team soon within the next year or so. I don't know. I, th I thought Yudoka was a big part of what the Celtics accomplished last year. And um, yeah, not sure how this is going to go exactly. Also, the factor of Robert Williams missing a pretty big or pretty major portion of the beginning of the season, most likely. So yeah, but I mean, I don't think 53 and a half is crazy. That's for sure. I had them at like 55 wins for my reasonable prediction before the Yudoka stuff. Brooklyn, 51 and a half. Okay, so this one I would feel a little bit more comfortable, but still, we still haven't gotten into any teams that I would be comfortable putting a bet on, really, uh, mainly because the number is not too far away. And also, these teams are highly variable. You know, they, they could really go either way. The Hawks are like more of that than average, I would say, than the average team in the NBA. But then Celtics, especially, like even more. And then Brooklyn is probably, if not one of the most, then the most volatile, I guess, coming into the season. I have no idea where they're going to end up for the most part. So I felt safe putting it at 48 just because I feel like if they, they go under, they're going to be close to that. You know, I don't think they're going to fall below like 40 four wins for the most part. Let's see what I put their ceiling and floor at. I tried to use more extreme scenarios to, to pinpoint these numbers. So yeah, I have their floor at 33 and 49. And that's really just if KD doesn't play really this season, maybe he gets either injured or he does end up trying to force his way out of the situation after having that trade request earlier in the offseason. And then Kyrie, maybe he's a no-show. Maybe Ben Simmons is just a complete shell of his former self. Like all of these things really aren't that far-fetched. And so if all three of those things happen, that I don't know what the record's going to look like. So I just put it down here at 33 and 49. And their ceiling, I have them at 59 and 23 because they do have a lot of talent on the roster if everything breaks right. But yeah, nothing too crazy so far. Charlotte, man, 
I thought this would be more exciting. I wasn't expecting to be so close to every every uh, number. So their over under line is 34 and a half. I have them at 32. Chicago 41 and a half. I have them at 42. They make good lines, I guess. Yep. And Cleveland, they have them at 47 and a half. I got them at 48. Dallas 48 and a half. I have them at 48, I believe. Yep, 48. Denver. 51 and a half. Okay, so this is higher. This is one of the few over-unders that I actually heard someone reference before um, on a podcast. And the number I heard a few weeks ago, at least, was 49 and a half. So I thought that this would be one of, you know, one of the ones that was a bit of a gap from my prediction. But they, you know, after that podcast, apparently must have had a good number of people starting to bet on the nuggets or something and raise the line to 51 and a half. But um, yeah, so never mind. I think that is a pretty decent over-under line, to be honest. Detroit, I have them at 32 wins. They have them at 29 and a half. So a little bit of a difference there, I guess, but not too crazy. Uh, Golden State, 52 and a half. I have them at 54. What I, What's even been the most different? I, I don't feel like there's been... Was it? I mean, Atlanta was two and a half difference. Celtics was two and a half as well. Brooklyn was, that's three and a half, right? Yeah, so that was probably the most. Yeah, that's been the most so far as Brooklyn at three and a half. Houston, 23 and a half. I have them at 20, so there, there's another, that's uh, tied for the biggest one now. Um, I would go under this, honestly, because of the whole Wenbanyama factor. Pacers, 23 and a half. I think that's a really good line. I have them at 22. Clippers, 52 and a half. I got them at 52. Another good line. Lakers, 44 and a half. I have them at 44. Man, I thought I was going to be really different on that one. But to be fair, I did, in the podcast I recorded, I did have that at them at 41. I have updated it since then because because of, um you know, thoughts of potential rust trade really is, is a big factor. You know, adding new pieces in like potentially Miles Turner, Buddy Heald, you know, that would definitely make the season a lot, go a lot better for them. Um, but also just thinking about the factor more of like LeBron and AD coming back, hopefully having a more healthy season. And just like the fact that I think they're going to be better than last season. There's a lot of reasons why they were bad last season, even beyond just the rust factor. You know what I mean? So I tried to factor that in a little bit. I bumped them up a little bit from where I had them. And apparently it's right where FanDuel has them too. Memphis, 48 and a half. I have them at 49. Miami, 49 and a half. I have them lower. Oh, 47. But that's not that much. Milwaukee, 52 and a half. I have them at 54. Minnesota, 48 and a half. I have them at 47. Wow. I thought I was a little going to be a little bit higher, honestly, than the uh, over-under. 45 and a half for Pelicans. I have them at 46. The Knicks, 38 and a half. I have them at 37. But to be fair, a couple days ago, before I really fine tuned this and, you know, nailed them down to where I wanted the numbers, I had them at 35 for a long time. Really, what brought them up was mainly bringing some other teams down a little bit towards the bottom for the tanking factor for Winbanyama. Uh, so that, you know, left me with a few wins to give to some other teams. So I gave the Knicks a couple. Oklahoma City, 22 and a half. I have them at 23. Orlando, 27 and a half. I have them at 29. Philadelphia, 50 and a half, which I believe has been like the over underline for three years now, but I have them at 52. So honestly, I would probably take the over on that. I know it's just like a one and a half over, but out of most of these so far, I feel a little bit more confident about that one being over that line. Suns 52 and a half, I'd stay away from it, but I have them at 51. Portland 39 and a half, I have them at 39. Man, I, I promise you, I have not heard anybody else's predictions or like looked at any over under lines or anything like that. Um, I haven't even listened to a whole lot of podcasts, even where they would be talking about stuff like this. You know, I was making it a point of like really wanting it this to be a genuinely my opinion, my prediction going into it, not really letting a whole lot of influence come from the outside. But somehow it's still the same. I was hoping I would have some hot takes. But I, oh, as I'm explaining all this, I didn't even notice Sacramento. They have a 33 and a half and I'm at 38. This is not one of the lines that I was expecting that would be very different from what I have. That is way too low, in my opinion. Out of all the teams that are going to be tanking this year and trying to lose, the Kings are definitely not one of them. And that's not because of like that that they're that good, but it's just from an organizational standpoint. They're on the longest playoff drought in the history of the NBA and the longest active in any North American sports. And the organization now, for the past couple of years, have been saying like, it's a make the playoffs at any cost. Like that's their MO. That's why they traded away Tyrese Halliburton last season, who was like their prized, you know, young player, uh, young asset. They traded him away for DeMontis Bonus, a more established star who's valued in, in a trade probably most to, to the average team in a vacuum 
is lower than Tyrese Halliburton just because of the potential factor and the age factor and stuff like that. But Sabonis is more of a win now type of piece. That's what they were trying to do. They still narrowly missed. Like there's no way that they're going to be trying to lose this year. And they have a decent enough team to get up to this this range here. I feel like they could even pass up the Blazers, honestly. Like even at full health, both these teams, I think the Kings could have a better record. Lakers, I think something probably would have to go wrong a little bit. Their season would have to go south a little bit, and but the Kings could pass up them potentially too. I don't think they're falling below these teams down here, to be quite honest. So this is one I would definitely put a bet on if I was a betting man. And if sports betting was legal in Nebraska, I'd definitely do it. So San Antonio, 22 and a half. Okay, so there's, it's so weird. After I went on the big spiel of how, you know, it, I was so surprised. Every single one was so close. Now I got two in a row. So this one, how different is this, I guess? Three and a half? I, so I guess it's not the biggest I've seen, but still, you know, a bit bigger. I And I can definitely understand this line, to be honest. The thing that's really holding me back, I guess, from pulling them all the way down there is the fact that they're the Spurs and they always win more games than their roster, you know, looks like they'll win. But, may, you know, maybe they are just going to go all in. The fact that they have this, they have a lower over under than the Pacers and the Jazz, though, I think, or not Jazz. I, we haven't got to Jazz yet. Uh, the Rockets, I mean, because both of them have a 23 and a half over underline, I'm pretty sure, uh, from what we saw. But the fact that the Spurs is lower than them, I think is kind of dumb. If anything, it should be the same, I guess. But all right, so Toronto, here's another team that I feel like I might be a little bit different on, maybe, than the consensus. Nope, I'm exactly right on. They they have it at 46 and a half. I have them at 46. Utah, okay, the fact that Utah's over under is 23 and a half, there's no way. I would go under on this one pretty hard, harder than the Houston one. If the Spurs do go all out, like I said, go all out for a tank, maybe they end up lower than Jazz. But I feel like the most likely scenario, if you factor an average altogether, like the most likely scenarios, uh, then I think the Jazz should have a lower number. Because in more universes than the Spurs, they are losing the most games. You know what I mean? Now we got the last team, the Washington Wizards, who, yeah, 35 and a half. I have them at 33. Honestly, I wasn't expecting their over-under to be this high. I thought it would be a little bit lower, to be quite honest. But yeah, wow, that was remarkably uneventful. I thought that there would be a lot more to kind of talk about and discuss, you know, why their number is so different than mine and what went into my reasoning. But okay, maybe, you know, what I should do next year is just not think about it so much because I really wanted to like, like I pretty, I spent a lot of time on this. I would come back. I changed numbers quite a bit. You know, I, I had to think about a lot of teams. I would kind of do a deep dive for a while on just a few teams, think about them for a long time and then come back to the other teams and think about, you know, how do I feel about them now, now that I have this new perspective on this other team, stuff like that. But I guess I narrowed it down to some pretty popular numbers. So next year, maybe I'll just like do it a speed run and then see see how different it is. But yeah, I think that's going to be it for this video. Thank you for watching. Go check out the Hoop Theory podcast. Uh, basically, anywhere you get podcasts, be looking out for that Eastern Conference episode to come out. Um, you'll hear me do a much deeper dive on each team. Talk about, you know, their key losses, key ads, stuff like that. Uh, talk about their ceiling scenario and their floor, and then kind of give what I feel like their reasonable prediction range should be. So if you liked this at all, it'll be like that, just a lot more in depth. So thanks for watching. I'll talk to you guys next video.